Hello and welcome. You're with us here on Business Today. I'm Abha Bakaya. Here are the day's top stories. The Huron Rich List reflects the economic pain the world went through last year. Number of billionaires down 8%. India leads China in the number of new billionaires created. Volatile trade on the Lull Street ahead of the U.S. Fed interest rate decision later tonight. Sensex up 140 points, Nifty up 44 as healthcare and auto lead gains. Banking crisis in the West could hit the Indian IT sector hard. Reports claim turbulence could shrink revenues by as much as 30 basis points. Nightmare, that's the word Paytm founder Vijay Shekhar Sharma uses for chat GPT. Tweets that artificial intelligence will increase fraud in the financial sector. Industry veteran and Aditya Birla Group chairman Kumar Mangalam Birla honored with the Padma Bhushan at a glittering ceremony at Rashtrapati Bhavan receives the prestigious honor for his contribution to trade and industry. India has produced 187 new billionaires in the past one year. The 2023 M3M Huron Global Rich List, released earlier today, shows that as many as 24 Indian cities and towns produced a record 187 billionaires in 2022. Of these, 66 new billionaires came from Mumbai, while 39 were from New Delhi and 21 from Bengaluru. The maximum number of new billionaires were produced in the US. India overtook China in the list last year. And in fourth place is Germany, fifth was Switzerland. Importantly, the world had fewer billionaires last year in comparison to 2021. While the number dropped 8%, their total wealth declined 10%, reflecting the economic pain the world is currently undergoing. Over 1,000, 1,078 to be precise, saw their wealth increase, while 2,479 saw their wealth decrease or stay the same. 445 dropped off the billionaires list. In India, Mukesh Ambani took on the mantle of the richest Indian from Gautam Adani, who witnessed a rapid erosion in his wealth. The Adani Group chairman lost $28 billion in wealth last year, an average fall of 3,000 crore rupees every week. To discuss these trends and more from the M3M Huron Global Rich List, we're joined by Anas Rahman Janeth, MD and Chief Researcher of Huron India. Anas, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, always great to see the list and some of the insights that it really throws up. I mean, First and foremost, share with us the positioning for India on the list. A whole lot of self-made billionaires, but maybe not top of the charts globally as it was in previous years. Oh, hi, th thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. I think this is the, the 12th edition of uh, the M3M Huron Global Rich List. Uh, as mentioned by you during your intro, I think uh, it's been pretty much a, a very rough year in terms of wealth creation uh, on the back of Ukraine war, uh, inflation, uh, uh, inflation and uh, and the late the latest one being the banking crisis and so on, uh, and of course the dollar is appreciated almost 12 percent year on year, and that's had an effect on the value of dollar billionaires as well. Uh, so so t so it's been a, a rough year in that in that context. Uh, but I think uh, the the whole purpose of the uh, the MTM Huron Global Rich List is to look at uh, how we've grown over the last uh, 12 years. Uh, so when we put out the list in 2012, India had about 49 US dollar billionaires. And now that number has grown to uh, almost 187, uh, if I just take off the dropouts as well. And uh, interestingly, uh, the wealth creation, uh, the, with the wealth creation number, back uh, uh, also has going up. For, for instance, uh, the number of billionaires with a net worth of more than 5 billion US plus, uh, that has grown from about 13, 10 years back to about 30 right now. That's almost three, ti uh, three times. Uh, the number of uh, super billionaires with a wealth of uh, 10 billion plus has grown from about four uh, in uh, 10 years back to about 11 now. So overall, if you look at the story from a uh, 10, 12 year perspective, the wealth creation in India has been uh, fantastic. But of course, this year has been a pretty much rough year. Uh, uh, all, all, you know, cumulatively, India lost about 40 billionaires. We had uh, we added about 16 new billionaires as well. Uh, so overall, it's been a uh, it's been a bad year globally. Uh, but in uh, 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 long term perspective, I think it, it is looking definitely bright. Right. You know, let's talk about uh, the billionaire that has been in the news, and that's uh, Gautam Adani. Uh, he has, of course, uh, seen an erosion in wealth, but he's not the only billionaire globally. Just put it into perspective for us, uh, uh, you know, Anas. 
just just to give you a perspective right uh, the top four tech billionaires from uh, the us which includes your elon musk or jeff bezos or sergey brin larry page if you just add the total wealth that they've lost it's about 200 billion us now that is almost double uh, uh, double the amount of all the wealth lost by the indian billionaires and the mtm who are in global rich list mm. so the globally the wealth erosion has been much much higher uh and you know uh, so india definitely india has taken a hit uh, but uh, just to give you a these are sort of numbers right so uh, yeah uh, it is definitely a, a bit of a loss there but then i think uh, countries like us china they've had much a bigger wealth depletion compared to that of india on a cumulative basis and there was also an interesting statistics which showed which was more uh, native born uh, billionaires versus uh, uh, you know billionaires that have migrated take us through that as well because that's also a shift in the list as opposed to previous years that's a, actually a very interesting stats in the sense that uh, when you put out the list about 10 years back almost 22% of the list were the nris you know in, that means Indi indians who have migrated out from india uh, and they've been creating their respective businesses there and so on but now that number is shrunk uh, shrunk down to almost 13% so that's actually quite interesting uh, it's not because we lost a lot of nra billionaires it's only because the the proportion of local billionaires or super wealth creators are going up and uh, uh, and and from the number of cities you know mm -hmm. in, in terms of just the billionaire uh, population alone you know, not even going to the wider rich list now billionaire population alone you know about 10 years back uh, we found representation from about five to seven cities now it's about 24 to 25 cities from which all these uh, entrepreneurs are coming from so the wealth creation across is happening across the board uh, uh, from uh, tier 2 tier 3 cities a lot of local companies are uh, growing you know a lot of interesting uh, companies are being built in india and we haven't even okay we've had a good startup revolution now that has kind of taken a momentary pause because of uh, uh of uh, in inflation and you know lack of uh, availability of capital and so on once all that picks up uh, in uh, possibly in the next couple of years i really hope that uh, all the engines you know the startup uh, the, uh, the 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 bottom uh, the opportunities that tack tackle the rural india which is a bottom 800 million uh, population uh, traditional industries family businesses all that's going to india is going to fire from all cylinders you know so that's it's going to be exciting you know from that perspective Okay, I also saw that uh, Baiju's is uh, being recognized globally as uh, as one of the leading names in education. Uh, take us to the results there. Yeah, so I think that's a very interesting fact. I didn't really quite notice it while I was you know compiling the list. You know, when I was try when we were trying to put out the M3 Moran Global Rich List and trying to put India in context, a uh, lot of interesting facts uh, popped up, which is basically uh, the number one. Uh, aviation uh, yeah. entrepreneurs in the world yeah. right which means number of wealth, wealth number one wealth creators from aviation sector is from Indi uh, india the founders of indigo uh, the number one uh, paint manufacturer the paint based entrepreneurs the founder of asian paints uh, in the world is from india uh, the world's richest pharmaceutical entrepreneur is from india which is basically dr saras punawala uh, uh, so it's simply education the number two uh, is by juice mm. so if you look at all these factors you know indians are really creating uh, the, the, it really speaks volume about volumes about uh, one uh, the market the india as a market secondly the fact that we have amazing set of entrepreneurs who are building uh, companies not just in india but also exporting to the world which includes the likes of dr puramala of seram or uh, byju's who's creating uh, amazing tech uh, a company which is you know exporting to the rest of the world and so on so there are quite a few interesting uh, uh, kind of topics that popped up Fantastic. Uh, great chatting with you, uh, Anas, and uh, you know, understanding some of the insights from the Huron Rich List, uh, the M3M Huron Global Rich List, which is much awaited every year, and uh, seeing many of those Indians still very much on top. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Adani Group will be bidding for more airports in the country. According to the Adani Airport CEO, Arun Bansal, the company aims to become the leading airport operator and will bid for more airports. Adani Airports won bids to operate six airports in the last round of airport privatization. The government is expected to privatize about a dozen more airports soon. The company also announced that the first phase of the Navi Mumbai Airport will start operations by December 2024. The airport will have a passenger handling capacity of 20 million in the first phase. Adani Airports currently operates seven airports including Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Lucknow.
On the back of firm global queues, benchmark uh, equity indices were able to extend their gains for the second straight session today amid choppy trade. However, gains were capped ahead of the U.S. FOMC policy outcome, which kept traders on tenter hooks. The Sensex closed up 140 points, Nifty up 44 points, and topping the list of gainers, HDFC Life, Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Pinsurf, Sun Pharma, and Tara Consumer. Some of the losers today, PPCL, NTPC, Coal India, Adani Ports, and Adani Enterprises. The Indian IT sector facing strong headwinds due to the emerging banking crisis in the West. Experts believe India's top IT firms may see their revenues take a hit as 30% of their revenues from banking, financial services and insurance companies remains vulnerable in the light of the U.S. financial crisis. My colleague Sakshi Batra spoke to Mayuresh Joshi of William O'Neill India to understand if Q4 earnings could reflect the impact. Our Indian banking system is a sound, you know, much more fundamentally strong, and we own have, we have our own strong fundamentals, and that may not be as impacted with this banking crisis that's emerging on the global front. Uh, but you know, more and more concerns are emerging on how uh, this banking crisis could really impact the Indian IT sector, and how that may be more vulnerable to this crisis, much more than anticipated ripple impact on the banking sector, and that is because 40% of the revenues of the industry really come from the BFSI segment. Now, uh, what could this really mean for the earnings of the IT sector going forward from here? Do you really expect a sharper hit on the revenues going forward? So, if you probably peg the earnings over the next uh, four quarters and spread it even further over the next eight quarters, uh, uh, if the impact in terms of the banking contagion uh, carries on and lingers further, uh, a lot of revenues for uh, IT companies coming through the BFSS sector it ranges anywhere between 30 to 60 odd percent. Uh, and therefore, I think a major majority chunk of the revenues will be de dependent in terms of how further order of flows will come through, which can get muted because of this contagion risk. Uh, the other element, as uh, we were just discussing, Sakshi, in terms of whether it's a soft or a hard landing as far sure. as the recession is concerned. Uh, hmm. The other sectors, which are obviously dependent on banking for their funding needs, uh, yeah. whether it's manufacturing, whether it's retail, uh, if this comes under some element of uh, Concern. I think uh, it will mm. only happen to the well rated uh, uh, manufacturing or uh, retail units out there. And therefore, I think the credit flow might just be very, very selective, which might mm. also hamper the for IT companies as well. Europe has been a soft patch for IT companies in general. Uh, yeah. And therefore, I think um, IT companies might go through a phase where things might start coming off a tad bit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think our view on the sector as a whole, whether it's large caps or mid caps, uh, is quite neutral at this point of time. I think Q4 will be a deciding factor for the sector. Yeah. Is it possible for you to quantify the kind of hit that we can face on the revenues on the Indian IT players in Q4, for example? So if you look in general, I think, as I said, 30 to 40 percent from the FSI, okay. you're probably looking at yeah. 10, 15 percent from manufacturing. Uh, mm -hmm. The kind of order wins have been pretty decent so far. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so there can be a hit of uh, mid-single digits when it comes to a constant currency growth uh, for uh, mm -hmm. the players as a, as, as a whole. Uh, Veteran industrialist Kumar Mangalam Birla has been conferred with the Padma Bhushan, India's third highest civilian award. The chairman of the Aditya Birla Group received the honor at a glittering ceremony at Rashtrapati Bhavan. The Padma Bhushan is in recognition of his contribution to the field of trade and industry. Kumar Manglam Birla is the fourth recipient of the Padma Award in the Birla family. His great-grandfather, G.D. Birla, was awarded the second highest civilian award of the country, Padma Vibhushan, in 1957 for his contributions to trade and industry. His grand-uncle, uh, G.P. Birla, received the Padma Bhushan Award in 2006 for social work. Kumar Manglam Birla's mother, Rajshri Birla, also received the Padma Bhushan in 2011 for social work. Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation of uh, Six Street Telephony in the country today. He unveiled India's Six Street mission and launched uh, the test bed which will allow research on new initiatives for next-gen technology. The government has already constituted the Bharat Six Street project and appointed a high-level panel to oversee it. Speaking at the inauguration of the ITU Area Office and Innovation Center, Modi said the developments will give Digital India a fresh boost. Today, we have a vision document in front of us. In the next few years, we will become a big part of the 6G rollout of 6G rollout. Friends, in the world, we have a big और भारत में सफल टेलीकॉम टेक्नोलॉजी आज विश्व के अनेक देशों का ध्यान 
अपनी तरफ खींच रही है 4G और उससे पहले भारत टेलीकॉम टेक्नोलॉजी का सिर्फ एक यूजर था कंज्यूमर था लेकिन अब भारत दुनिया में टेलीकॉम टेक्नोलॉजी का बड़ा एक्सपोर्टर होने की दिशा में आगे बढ़ रहा है A massive battle on music rights has broken out between Z and the global streaming service Spotify. As a result, tens of thousands of songs have gone missing from Spotify's library. While talks between the two companies are still on, it's the listeners, paid or otherwise, of Spotify who find their music preferences derailed off the tracks. Tens of thousands of songs like these have gone off air on Spotify in the past few days. The reason? Spotify has not been able to renew its licensing agreement with Z Music. The music streaming service has said that it will continue its good faith negotiations in hopes of finding a mutually agreeable solution soon. As the statement says, a quick solution is critical for Spotify. According to reports, Z Music had over two dozen tracks on Spotify's daily top 200 songs chart for India when the license agreement expired last week. The missing songs came to the notice of listeners gradually, and the reaction was swift. There have been threats to withdraw from the paid subscription to please that the two companies bury the hatchet and release songs on the platform. Spotify entered the Indian market in February 2019 and by April had 2 million active users. Worldwide the streaming service has 489 million users as of 2022 end and India is one of its top 5 markets. It competes with likes of Apple Music, YouTube Music and Desi players like Jio Saavn, Airtel owned Wink and Gaana with monthly subscription charges ranging from 49 rupees to 119 rupees. Z Music meanwhile is one of the three biggest music companies in India along with T series and Sare Gama. It along with its sister concern Z Studios has a portfolio of tens of thousands of songs as well as 94 million subscribers on its YouTube channel. It is not the first time that Z Music is also absent from a music platform. Last year the company cut its ties with Gaana a few months before the audio streaming platform became a subscription only service. Bureau report business today television. Hyundai is all set to ramp up the capacity of its India plants with supply chain problems abating a little and months of waiting periods for its models. The company has announced it will add a capacity of 50,000 units this year. BTTV associate editor Chetan Bhutani spoke to Tarun Garg, chief operating officer at Hyundai, at the sidelines of the launch of the new Verna, and asked him about sales numbers and capacity expansion plans. Uh, how are the commodity prices playing out? Uh, do you, and uh, are the prices stable? Because many companies are not now really uh, increasing prices for vehicles. Uh, where is Hyundai standing at that? Look, uh, frankly speaking, last two years have been like a very, very difficult in terms of commodity prices, the raw material, the prices have gone up, of course, regulatory requirements, etc., etc. Hopefully, things will be much, much more stable in terms of the, if we see the global economy, if we see the challenges, uh, supply challenges are reducing now, uh, the ocean freights probably, you know, a little bit coming down. So I think there is a lot of stability coming in, and uh, now that. The RD norms also from 1st of April will kick in, so things are looking much more stable. So I hope the prices will be able to hold. Uh, but let us see because uh, you know there are still some geopolitical challenges. There's a Russia-Ukraine war going on, uh, so there are challenges. Let's see. Uh, we can only hope that prices are more stable. Also, the regulations of BS six uh, part two coming up. Do you think uh, in the latter part of the year would there be a price hike to accommodate uh, the, uh, the the regulatory framework? Look, I would say that Hyundai has been very proactive because we we shifted to. Uh, you know, Adi, uh, right from first fe first of February, we stopped the production in January end. So we have been very proactive. We did not want to wait for the last moment. So we look at stability, but it will all depend on how the raw material prices pan out. Nobody knows. We also don't know. Let's see. We are always ex warned that uh, you know the customer gets a good value, and today also the kind of response we have been receiving after the price announcement has been fabulous. Absolutely. The company recently also filed a, a term sheet with uh, with. 
uh, for the Talegaon plant. Before it comes, don't you think it will be there will be a lot of regulatory hurdles with the employees also and the legal challenges that will be coming up? And before the plant actually belongs to Hyundai stable, uh, are you anticipating any challenges, sir? Today is about Varna, so let's discuss Varna. All right, so uh, I'll move on to the other parts uh, of uh, the uh, of the interview, sir. Uh, with, the, with the recent sales that the Hyundai did, uh, 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 spectacular six to eight percent growth uh, we saw. So, how are you anticipating growth uh, in the further coming days, sir? Uh, I think uh, still this the market is robust. We are sitting on a back order of about 115,000. We are uh, supply situation is improving. I would not say that all the troubles are passed uh, behind us, but situation is improving. So we hope to you know slowly increase the volumes when you talk about growth you know growth is very very subjective because if you see 22 growth of more than 20 percent it was on a lower base so you cannot expect that kind of a growth going forward if you see various independent agencies whether it was siam or nomura i think they're all predicting a growth of three to six percent so we feel there would be growth which is very good because global economy as you know there are so many challenges industry looks much more robust okay. we are having a good booking flow now that the new hyundai Verna has been launched we are very confident that things should be looking good. At the same time, we have to be aware of the interest rates. We have to be aware of the geopolitical risk. So let's see. I think we have to see it month by month, quarter by quarter. I think we should be able to scale through. Last two, was my last two questions, sir. Uh, how is the uh, demand for the previous vehicles, including the Tucson and the Creta, looking like? Uh, and how much is the backlog currently? And how do you expect to finish that backlog? The response is fabulous. Uh, you talked about Tucson. You know, we used to sell about 1,000 Tucson a year. We are only looking at maybe selling more than 5,000. So the response is fabulous. Creta, we are sitting on a back order of about 45,000. Total back order is about 115,000. So demand is looking very robust. And with the all new Hyundai Varna, I'm sure things are going to only improve from here. Last question, sir. Uh, with respect to the interest rates we mentioned, uh, uh, EMIs are still, you know, doubling up for, unfortunately, for the consumers who are buying on EMIs and financing the vehicles. Uh, do you think, uh, on your part, could you be uh, getting in some financial schemes to ease in the burden? What's, what's there, sir? Look, uh, there are some macroeconomic factors, as you know, and unfortunately, the interest rates have gone up. We hope we have seen the worst part uh, over and hopefully with inflation being controlled, the interest rate should, uh, uh, you know, start coming down. 80% uh, of the cars are financed. So we can only hope that uh, things improve. As far as, you know, subventions and uh, discounts, etc., among it they depend, you know, month on month, model on model. I don't think as such there is a, there is a strategy, ki, okay, this is what I'm going to do through the year. Because all these things are very, very dynamic and they all depend on how the market, how the market behaves. Any comment on capacity expansion despite the Talegaon plant? What are you uh, doing? Because ultimately you'll have to expand your capacity until Talegaon plant comes to you. So, uh, frankly speaking, if we, we have already announced that in, the Chennai, in Chennai also, uh, from 765,000 current capacity, we are going up to, uh, we are adding 50,000. The capacity will start increasing from S2 of this year. So, yes, we are, we are very optimistic. I think as far as Indian or automobile industry is concerned, we are very, very positive. Uh, in the mid-term, long-term, uh, uh, about the growth prospects, and things are things are very good. The GDP is looking much better than the world GDP. Uh, the 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 population age is young. The disposable incomes are only going up. So I think things are, as far as India is concerned, I think it's a very bright, uh, great bright spot in the world economy. And everybody is looking at India in a very positive way. And definitely Hyundai, with its very strong legacy of more than 25 years in India, we are quite confident about the success of the auto industry in India. That's how we leave it on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching.